Hi, welcome to Painting Lab. In this episode, I'm going to answer the question I've been asking on this channel for seven years. What would it look like if the skills of purely realistic drawing and painting were as simple as uh, eating a jam sandwich? Mm, delicious. So this episode was going to be about the absolute basics of painting. I was going to give you some demonstrations about paint layering or how you put one brush mark on top of another without ending up in a mess. And then I managed to film the creation of this portrait using the comparator mirror. And when I look back at the footage, I realised that this is the new perspective on painting I've been searching for all these years. So we're going to dive straight into this picture, we're going to tackle those basics and, well, everything else. I want to promise you that this is not a demonstration of my skill, even if you're a complete beginner, you're going to be able to follow along and see how I problem solve, how I find solutions that allow me to create a picture like this. At the end of this video, I'm going to come back and tell you how you can become actively involved in everything that Painting Lab is up to. But for now, well, we've got a portrait to make. So a quick tip, if you want to get started with oil painting or acrylic uh, really cheaply, the back of an old cereal box or something like that is ideal. Prime it with kids school glue that will stop your oil paint leaching into your paper or your cardboard. And then mask out the perimeter of your painting, which of course means that if you paint up to this masking tape, when the painting's finished, you can remove it and you'll end up with really nice crisp edges. This will make your painting seem much more complete, much more deliberate. So let's begin uh, with a few very quick marks to give myself a sense of the structure um, so I can quickly put things in, check back and forth. And in this process, the magic trick of how you put a portrait like this together will be revealed. So I'm going to put my mid-tones and my highlights in and I'm going to resist the temptation to blend until we've got those in place. And the reason for that is that you can very easily get stuck into problems of detail and shape that you didn't want to. I hope that you're able to see that I'm doing this through a process of comparison, which is exactly, uh, you know, it's the same process I would use if I were painting a portrait conventionally, which I do all the time, I'm a portrait painter, uh, except that the distance of comparison from the mirror to our painting has been shortened and that makes things a little easier to grasp. What I think is that when I put my darker tones in for the hair here, this underpainting will drag through that brown and create all sorts of interesting light effects. So for a first layer, I'm fairly happy with that. I might just uh, put in some underpainting on the shadow side of the face. Might just put an indication of these lips in. Yep, something like that. Now I'm going to start placing in my highlight colours. I want you to be able to see how I can use this next tone to uh, refine some of these shapes by cutting back in against things. You know, say for instance with the profile on the top of this eyebrow here, I can now use this fresh layer of paint to refine the shape here. I'll just get rid of that flick. But it's through this process of placement and then gradual refinement like that, that we're able to achieve detail and the, the absolute pitfall of painting uh, wet on wet especially is to fall into the trap of painting too much detail too quickly. So all I need to do at this point is use this new colour to refine my shapes just a little more. And this means that you can uh, enjoy the challenge of trying to get shapes where you need them. So I'm going to try to get a sense of the line of the top of this lip in here. Something like that. You 
know, so the process for refining a portrait is not necessarily about correcting mistakes as they happen. It's about gradually tightening an image up. So now I'm going to put in a highest highlight, which will look something like white, but it's just slightly off white. So I'm looking back and forth in the mirror to reassure myself. And then I'm just going to place my highlight color, something like that. And so uh, we are ready to begin blending. So the theory here is to use a soft, clean brush and to drag between two areas of color to blend them together. I'm using a sable and it's quite a small pointed round brush, but really you can use whatever works for you. And I'm making sure that I wipe my brush clean at probably 10 or 15 second intervals. I don't want to pick up any excess paint as I blend. And I can really be as subtle as I want with this and use this as an opportunity to adjust shape. I can push one color into another where I need to. I can kind of slightly bully the paint. Or I can uh, just let two colors mingle and do what they want to do. I'm seeing that this pink needs to come up slightly there. So I'm going to take paint from the surface of my picture. I don't need to apply any more and just pull up. Because everything on this painting is still wet, everything is mobile, I can uh, push and pull anything I want to achieve more accurate shapes. What are we going to do here? Well, I suspect if I blend this in this direction, I might end up about where I need to be. So I've spent most of my professional life refining these skills on my own, unable to uh, really show you what I'm doing. In fact, the, you know, the trap has always been with paint demos that um, you end up entertaining people uh, but the more skillfully you paint, the further away what you're up to gets from something that uh, the people watching you feel that they could do themselves. Well, hopefully, because of this mirror, you're able to see exactly what I'm doing, and the magic trick is revealing itself to you. Now I'm going to put in uh, the hair and um, we'll see how this darker color interacts with this underpainting as we go. So based on the amount of pressure I put on the brush applying those, I'm going to put less pressure on this time and see if I can get the brush to skid over the surface. Something like that. And again, my pointed synthetic sable brush is helping me to achieve these flicks of hair. And um, the speed that I'm using this brush is also helping me to do that. I'm, I'm trying to let the paint do the talking. You know, when we're talking about an artist like John Singer Sargent, who we're copying today, um, up close, the paint is doing all kinds of delicious exciting things. The guy was knocking out dozens of commissioned portraits a year, so he had to paint fast. But as he was making these pictures, he was also enjoying the freedom to um, play with the paint. Now what we're gonna do uh, is come back with our background color and carve out the negative space. And that will bring this portrait into unity. We'll have um, an image that seems complete overall without detail. Um, and this is the point we want to arrive at. And I'll explain why uh, in just a second when we're there. And uh, as I look over the mirror, I can see that, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not at all the same as what's in our original, but this is my copy, not a slavish facsimile. So I'm perfectly happy with what I've got there. 
Okay, so my next challenge is to tackle the shadows on this side of the lady's face. So I'm going to try to do this with minimal brush marks. And again, because I have a fresh color on my brush, I can use it to subtly refine shapes. And we're going to use the point of this brush to try to get that shadow on the chin. Might try to put something of her lips in. Everything is roughly where I need it to be. And the temptation at this stage is to dive now into the details of eyes and nose and mouth. The things that will give this face a real sense of expression and identity and likeness. Now it's certainly possible to paint a wet on wet portrait from start to finish, but because this video is not about me just demonstrating my own skill to you, we're now gonna leave this painting to dry. So just hold on a sec and um, I'll be back in just a moment. All right, so now we're back with uh, a painting that is completely dry, if you don't believe me. There you go. And what this means is that we can place marks And uh, if we're not happy with things, we can manipulate our paint on the surface of the picture, as I showed you in my first uh, videos on this channel, by pushing at the edges of paint. We've used this technique already in, uh, in this video. Now I'm going to put in an almost ready kind of colour for the tear duct here. Of course, you're going to notice that this mark is enormous compared to what we actually need to achieve. Why is that? Well, we can now refine this, of course, with that sweeping technique again. I've got a clean brush. I'm going to push up. As we look over the top of our mirror, well, this is making comparisons easier, but it's also letting us see all sorts of things that are not quite accurate. That doesn't have to mean wrong necessarily. Um, but I'm going to not be overwhelmed. I'm just going to tackle things one at a time. And what, one of the things that's standing out to me is that this highlight here needs some adjustment. So what we're really doing is just pushing at the edges of things to get closer and closer to what we want. This paint is still wet. I'm going to pick some of it up and drag it in slightly. Now I'm seeing that this pink here is actually a pretty good match for the color of the white of this lady's eye. By the way, if you can find a painting where the whites of the eyes are actually white, um, <laughs> please do make me aware of it. Place paint in, then I'll refine the shape a little, and there we are. So you see the process of tackling details like this is really about problem solving, about figuring out how the puzzle pieces fit together. And uh, really learning the language of paint, becoming fluent with it, only means that you're able to solve these puzzles more quickly and more elegantly. So this mirror is really just a helping hand or a guide at the side. Allowing me to see that I'm not wandering away from what I want. This whole process is made easier by um, the fact that our painting has dried. And what that means is that if we really want to, if things go really badly, or if we want to practice solving these problems, we can now use a wet, clean brush. I know this seems crazy, but we can remove everything we've just done and have another go. 
And uh, I've said this before, but if you were an actor, you'd expect to rehearse lines. If you were an athlete, you'd expect to train in your particular sport over and over again. But that's not an idea that many of us think about if we're thinking in terms of learning how to paint. But that's exactly what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna see if with a second attempt, I can come up with slightly more elegant solutions to how to paint this eye here. So um, it's time for a bit of a montage, I think. And as I show you a sped up second attempt at solving this problem, let's hear from some of the other people who've used the comparator mirror to find a new confidence with drawing and painting. Somehow I was able to get an end result um, without me having to overthink. It looked like tracing perhaps, but it didn't feel like tracing. And the feeling was I was creating. I still had to do the work. What was so wonderful about that lady today, the, the comparator mirror, that she was full of joy. That I felt like I could relax a little bit more. This isn't cheating, this is looking at painting completely differently. So I hope you liked what you saw there. The aim of my game today has been not to intimidate you, but to show you how I problem solve and how I can build painting up. If you've liked what you've seen, don't forget to do all the normal things. You can like and subscribe and leave me a comment. You know the drill. And well, I know that today's demo is just the tip of the iceberg and I can't wait for you guys to see what I'm bringing out on this channel. Uh, in the next few months. The most useful thing you can do if you really want to get involved is go to our website paintinglab.com. You can sign up to our mailing list there and of course that means that you'll be amongst the first to hear about the release of the comparator mirror glimpse that you saw me using in the video today but it means that we can get started on this experiment together right now. So once you've signed up to the mailing list what I'd like you to do if you want to is send me your memories of artistic success or setbacks. You could also record an MP3 and send that to me. What I really want to do with this is use your opinions to drive this channel forward. That's the really critical part about what we're doing here at Painting Lab, apart from making realistic painting and drawing completely accessible. And by tackling the problems we both face together, well, we'll have a totally new way in and a way to take the fear out and put fun and fascination in its place. So until next time, good luck with all your attempts to be creative. Wish me luck with mine, and I'll see you next time.